uh, how to compute for your tax returns, um, the different uh, income tax rates, the different tax forms, how to and how to file your actual income tax return. So I'll try to make this as easy and as concise as possible because the VAR just announced last Monday that they will not be extending the deadline uh, for annual ITR. So it will still be on April 15th. So we have roughly a week uh, to go before the deadline comes. And we really, really um, encourage you to submit them before April 15th because there have been times in the past where the BIR systems have um, lagged and crashed because of the sheer volume of um, tax returns being submitted and coming into the system. So if you want, we want to avoid the headache, we want to avoid the stress, we want to avoid the hassle as much as possible. So we strongly urge you guys to submit them as, as early as possible. And this is why we're here to help you go through that process a lot uh, easier and a lot smoother. Um, but before we go to the nitty gritty details of annual income tax return filings, let's discuss why it's important to file your annual income tax return. Um, and the first reason why you want to file your income tax returns is to get bigger clients. Um, and not only bigger clients, and it's also to access marketplaces such as Lazada. So if you want to expand your business and get more customers, one way to make sure that happens is to register with the BIR. Because when you deal with a lot of these um, bigger corporate entities, what they do is kind of like a vendor selection process. So they will need proof that you've uh, your registered business before they begin their transaction with you. So if you really are keen and you really want to grow your business for 2021, expand your marketing and sales channels, then this is one way you're definitely going to make sure of that by paying your taxes and receiving with a PIR. Next one is uh, loan approval. Uh, so why is paying your income tax return important for this? Now, this is what I'd like to call financial credentials. So if you're a full-time business owner, there's no other proof of income that you can provide aside from your income tax return. So compared to when you're an employee, you typically have an HR person or a boss to file your taxes for you. And that will that will be enough now because you're given a form 231. Uh, six at the end of each taxable year. Now, uh, since you're not able to get that, uh, uh, since you're doing it full time, eh, you typically don't have an HR person to do that as well, because no? I think most of us are uh, doing this business on our own. And imagine na lang this: so if you don't have an annual ITR, technically, <laughs> technically, you're unemployed because you don't have any proof that you're earning income. And this is what the banks and other lending institutions actually want. So with that in mind, if you don't have an annual, an annual income tax return, these banks, these credit, these credit unions, institutions will give you a hard time because you know it's they're doubting your ability to pay because you're, you're not able to prove that you're actually earning income. So this is it. If you want to get access to this sort of financing to help grow your business, then you will definitely need uh, to get an ITR, think of it as uh, at least think of it as an investment in your business in your business's expansion, because you'll never know. Uh, you'd want to maximize the options for uh, financing as much as possible. So next, let's uh, it's visa required. So after all this pandemic uh, uh, ends uh, and we're now free to travel abroad. Um, one thing that a lot of first world countries require before you travel, uh, before you get, you know, before you fly off with them is to have a visa. And with that visa requirement uh, comes with um, a proof of income to show that you have something basic to come back to the Philippines. So like what I said earlier, with loan approval, your I know ITR is your financial credential to prove to them that, hey, I'm earning in the Philippines, I don't need your money here, <laughs> basically. So that's what happens when your visa required. And lastly is tax penalties. Now, I would like to highlight this as much as possible because we want to avoid tax penalties as much as we can. Oh, and why I said is, and from a, bis from a business standpoint, naman, like, the tax penalties that you may be paying to the BIR if you fail to file your taxes, could be money that's used to grow your business, reinvest it into the business and grow it further. And, you know, like, that's kind of a waste of money if you just give it away to the VAR, no? Um, no penalties, I mean. 
So, and what a lot of people don't know about the BIR is that they've been really upping their game when it comes to data analytics. So they know, they know na who has been paying your taxes and who has not been t- paying your taxes. And we've had cases in the in the in the in our clients in Taksumo where our when we did their business registration for them, there were already penalties awaiting them in the BIR. And that's basically because the BIR knew like, hey, I know you were earning income na. So as much as we want uh, we try to avoid it as much as possible. That's a couple of thousand pesos naman and that you may be wasting if you if you have a penalty. So why not avoid that that trouble uh, and avoid the stress that you may that you know like um, that you may be potentially be getting a penalty from the BIR. So one thing is, is important for businesses uh, is that you know peace of mind. You get peace of mind once you're your business because you know you're compliant with the laws of the Philippines. So let's re- reiterate this section. So for tax compliance, uh, the reason why we want to do this is we want to get official receipts for bigger clients, more customers, income tax return for bank loans as proof of your income, income tax returns for visa applications to prove that you have income and I'm coming back to the Philippines, and of course, no tax holes, no penalties. Avoid penalties as much as we can, and use that money to grow your business instead. Now, let's go on to the meat of our topic, which is annual income tax returns. I will not be talking much about BI uh, registration because I'm assuming that everyone here is registered with the BIR. Now, let's uh, ask ourselves, who are required to file? Who are required to file the annual ITR? So there's basically four characteristics that the BIR has stated of people who are required to file the income tax returns. First is every Filipino citizen residing in the Philippines. Next is every Filipino citizen residing outside the Philippines on his income from sources within the Philippines. Every alien residing in the Philippines on income derived from sources within the Philippines. And every non-resident alien engaged in trade or business or in exercise of profession in the Philippines. Now, this is a lot of words. But we can just uh, condense this into one simple sentence. So in short, all individuals engaged in the business, trade, or practice of the profession in the Philippines is required to file an income tax return. So if you're earning outside of employment, then yes, you are required by law to declare income and file the appropriate taxes for it. And before we, and we'd, I'd like to discuss naman the different income tax rates because a lot of people don't know that there are different ways you can, you can basically compute for your tax payables and a big factor of this is the tax rate that we choose. Now, beginning with the train law, um, they've introduced one more tax rate for, especially for individual taxpayers. So the the first one that we had was credit income tax. This is basically the, what comes into our mind when we, th- when we think about tax tables, tax computations. And the next is 8% that income tax rate. But I'd like to discuss a bit more on rich income tax because this is a tax that typically is more beneficial for online sellers because you are able to deduct uh, expenses from it. So this is based on taxable income, meaning that you are able to use expenses as a deduction and use that taxable income as a way to, to determine your tax use. And there are two modes of deduction. Deduction means how are you able to declare your expenses. First is item as deduction, and the second is optional salary deduction. I will be and I will be discussing these two. In the next slide, the next demand is the eight percent flat income tax rate. I just like to bring this up because this this may be an option for you, but typically this is what we would recommend for mga professionals, freelancers, uh, such as mga doctors, graphic designers, because it's really beneficial if you have low uh, expenses. So mababaling overhead mo like you know uh, utilities lang and all that. So. The difference between 8% flat income tax rate and graded income tax rate is this one is based on your gross sales and gross receipts. So say, for example, you have, you, you've you earned uh, 100,000 pesos for the entire year. Uh, sorry, a million pesos for the entire year. You will be paying roughly 8% of that for the taxes. So that the computation is based on your gross. The natural taxable income, you're able to use expenses to deduct uh, as a deductible. Um the first thing that you need to be, to be aware of is that for you to be available to be eligible for this is that your gross sales must not exceed three million pesos, because if you exceed three million pesos, we all know that you will be automatically be a bad taxpayer. 
So the first two PK is the extent, especially if you're purely in earning from income and purely income if you're earning purely from your business or practice or profession, and you have to opt in to this yearly. Otherwise, if you don't opt in, you will be defaulted to the graduate income tax. There are three times that you are able to opt in, which is your form 1905, uh, BR form 2551Q, which is your percentage tax, and BR form 1701Q, which is your first quarter na annual income tax return, uh, first quarter income tax return filing. Sorry, ako dun. Now let's discuss uh, graduate income tax further because this is the more relevant uh, tax rate for you guys. So first is item as deduction. And like the, what the name implies, you list down all your expenses and deduct that total from your gross sales. And that's how you get your taxable income. Basically, you list down yung lahat ng mga expenses mo during the year or during the time period for you to be able to declare your, uh, for you to be able to compute your taxable income. Next one is the optional sun deduction. And what's the, the difference between this and item as deduction is that with OST or optional salary deduction, you are declaring to the BIR that your expenses are 40% of your gross sales. And this is really good if you're on the graduate income tax rate, but your expenses are less than 40% of your gross sales, meaning that you're able to declare more expenses and lower taxable lower the taxable income. And as a result, you're able to lower your tax juice. So this should be a tax hack for you if you can uh, if, um, if that's uh, if that case is for you. But yun nga, uh, every business is built differently, is operated differently. So you will have to assess this personally or with a, a professional like an accountant to discuss the best option for you in your business. Because like, like uh, 8% as well, you can only opt for uh, OSD once a year. So how to compute for annual ITR? So for the itemized, the taxable income is your gross sales minus gross purchases. And you will be able to determine your tax payable uh, uh, by referring to the tax table. And I'll show that in the next slide. And for graduate income tax rate, you are able to declare your, to be able to compute for your taxable income by multiplying your gross sales times 60%. The term your tax payable, you refer to the tax table, which I will show here. So this is the income tax table that will that is enforced uh, up until 2022. The, the rates will change in 2023, but you know, since you're still far away from that, let's discuss what's relevant now. So these are the brackets that you need to consider. And on the right column is where um, is how you're able to compute for your tax choose. So it's 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 fairly simple. The money you just need to refer to the column on the right to uh, to uh, to, to, de to de determine your tax your uh, annual income tax choose. Next, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that the question that's on everybody's mind right now is, how do I check which tax rate I'm on? And I'm assuming everyone here has registered now with the BIR. So the best way to determine which tax rate you're on is to go back and check your certificate of registration, because this will be out. This will be basically um, letting you know what are different tax forms that you need to file with the BIR. So this is what we call the form 2303, and this is what it looks like. So if you're, you know, this is basically um, uh, what we tell people to look into. If you're having trouble with your taxes or having a, a bit of confusion about that. Uh, so it, the first, yeah, the, the rule of thumb here is that if you have any problems with your taxes, refer back to your 2303, because most of the time this will resolve your questions. So where do we look at when we want to know which tax rate we're on? Um, see here, your tax type will be declared. Uh, you will be, you will know the um, the different taxes you need to file. So for this uh, specific individual, uh, it's um, income tax, related tax, and all that. Um, so next, let's discuss the sample computations. Naman. the sample computations uh, will be analog. We'll just run through because. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the first scenario here is that if the individual opted for 8% tax, 8% tax income tax rate. Okay. okay. Assume here that the, a certain freelancer has um, earned to 40000 in 2019. So how much tax tax uh, does he need to pay? To pay? So it's 240000 minus 250000 because you have my, my, exempt, my exemption for 250000 
And since the result here is negative 10,000, um, he has no tax just to pay, but he still needs to file. You know, like when you register your business with the BIR, you are now obligated to file your taxes, even if you're earning less than 50,000, or even if you're earning zero uh, for the entire year. Because you know, the BIR is expecting that for you to file, and if you don't file that, you know, it's penalties at that point yet again. Um, the business tax, individual does not need to file and pay because you, know, you opted for 8%. There's no need to pay. There's no need to pay business tax if you're on the 8% income tax rate, um, unlike when you're on the graduate income tax rate. Next one is the same. Uh, you've opted for 8% income tax rate, but uh, the difference here is that that, that individual has earned 500,000 in the year. So we deduct 500,000 by 250,000 and multiply 250,000 by 8%. And that individual needs to pay two thousand pesos. So it's it's quite simple if you're on eight percent actually. Then the last I know and the last um, scenario I'll be discussing is what if an individual has opted for graduate income tax? And this is the one that's more relevant to you guys. Uh, so assuming that this individual has um, earned two point five billion in twenty nineteen, with a cost of sales of one point seven million, so his taxable income is eight hundred thousand pesos. Now we refer back. To the tax to the tax table that I've shown you guys earlier, and from that we've um, we've calculated that his tax due is one hundred thirty thousand pesos. So that's typically how it goes for I know that's typically how the process goes if you're trying to compute for your annual income tax returns. So then the next question is which tax form should I use? Now there are three different types of tax forms that you will have to choose from if you're filing an annual income tax return. And I'll be discussing the next these three in the next slide. Um, first of all, is the uh, BIR form seventeen oh one a. Now you will use BIR form seventeen oh one a. And please uh, note this because there's a lot of conditions here. Use seventeen oh one a if you're earning purely from profession or business. So you're full time freelancer, professional, uh, business owner and have availed of the 8% income tax rate or graduate income tax rate with OSD as your mode of deduction. So that's the, I uh, know, that's the, how do you call this? That's the conditions for you to use 1701A. Next one is BIR form 1701. You will need to use this form if you're a mixed income individual. Mixed income means that you're both an employee and you're earning income from a business or a side profession, so you're you're an employee and you're also selling on the side, you will need to file BIR Form 1701. Or if you chose the graduate income tax rate with an itemized deduction method, that's where you will be using 1701. Now, the last is not really relevant to you guys, but let's discuss this naman for everyone's uh, uh, information, is BIR form 1700. And this is uh, this will only be filed if you're fully employed, wala kang business, wala kang side gig and all that. You have to use this form if you've had two or more employers in the last taxable year. So say for example, like switch ka ng companies or uh, ng employer, then you need the BIR form 1700 to combine the incomes from, basically, ano, combine the two incomes from those, uh, from your employment and declare the full amount to get a, declare the full uh, salary that you got for the entire year. So that's the, that's the use case for the Air Form 1700. Um, how to file your annual ITR? So there are various methods on how you can file your annual ITR. First is EFPS. This is an online solution by the BIR. Um, but you know, this is only available for the top taxpayers in the country. I don't remember ano yung minimum requirements in order for you to be eligible for EFPS. But yun nga, most of small businesses typically are not are not able to reach the threshold of EFPS. Um, next one is manual, meaning you're actually going physically to the accredited agent bank. So AAB or accredited agent bank means yung um, bank that is um, accredited by the BIR to receive your income tax returns and receive your uh, tax payments. Or you can go to revenue collection officers if there is no AAB in your area. Next demand is the EBIR forms. This is the BIR's own tax preparation program. So if you're not, uh, if you're not able to uh, be eligible for EFPS, you can use EBIR forms. 
Uh, and lastly, you can use Taxumo, which is Philippines pioneering tax automation software. Uh, you can use us to easily file and pay your taxes <laughs> in just minutes. Because okay? we, we heavily pride ourselves in the tax automation um, uh, features of our software. Uh, so those are the, these are the four different ways you can file your annual income tax return. So tax hacks for everyone, so you can have a better tax experience. So you can actually pay your annual ITR in, in two installments if it's more than 2,000 pesos. Say, for example, you find that the tax choose that you are going to pay right now is a bit too big, uh, it's a bit too much, then you can pay the rest in October. So if you want to manage your cash flows, uh, this is an option that you can take. So you can probably get the uh, oh, SAWT, Summary of List of Health Taxes, Another thing is your income tax, uh, your financial statements, um, and all that. So please don't forget the attachment that's important. Uh, otherwise, uh, potentially, you can penalize the PIR if you don't provide these attachments as well. Um, and let's just discuss lang briefly how Taxumo works for uh, you guys an idea of how easy, is it, how easy it is to do ITR in your system, uh, through our system. So we work on any browser or any device, so be it a laptop, desktop computer, mobile phone or tablet, you can easily find it there. Uh, tax process to us begins with you entering income and expenses, and this will be used as basis to determine your tax location. So we automatically calculate your taxes upon updating your cash flows, your income expenses with us. And we can auto fill the forms up for you, so you don't need to go through like because you like BR from the one that is this twelve page that you need to go through before you submit. So we take care of the whole, like, you know, like ano ba niya lalagay sa cell na to, so our software does that for you. And since we're an accredited tax service provider with the BIR, we can we are connected to their system, and you can easily submit those forms as well to the BIR. Uh, you can pay online through Taxumo, through various payment channels such as credit or debit cards, grab pay, uh, online banking, even through your local buy -in centers, and online show books of accounts. Uh, you're able to copy and paste this at the end of the year when it's time to uh, submit these uh, books of accounts to the BIR. Uh, and via machine learning, we can also recommend ways to save on your taxes based on past data. So let's say, for example, yung discussed it kanina na ano ba gano'n income tax rate, 8% ba, OSD ba, or itemized, then based on the financial data that we have for your, for, let's say, for example, your past, for your past taxable year, we're able to make a really good, ano, we're make, able to make a really good recommendation on what's the best, uh, what's the best tax rate or tax uh, schedule you can go through in the next year to lower the taxes that you need to pay to the BIR. And uh, if you want to monitor your accountants, be transparent with the whole process of your accountants, you can give them access to your account with you having the admin access so they won't be able to change anything, but you, they're able to submit your taxes for you via Taxumo through delegate access. And if you have any trouble with your taxes or your tax filing, our customer care team is available from until midnight. And we also have a free onboarding calls. You can also pay SSS on eBay uh, with us. It's uh, no transaction fee for subscribers. And that's all. That's it. Thank you so much. And let's begin with the Q&A portion of this webinar.